if it's if it's going to be a girl, then you're thinking about like how many boyfriends I'm going to have to beat up. Yeah. I should buy I'm going to have to buy a shotgun. You're going to have to buy a shotgun. Kid. Hang yeah, it up yeah. on the wall. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Never actually use it. Because... What's that? Feel like what do you think? What are you already planning in your head about what kind of father you're going to be, and do you have good examples of that and things that you want to stay away from? Oh, that's a great question. Um. So yeah, I, I think it's interesting. So, so a little bit of uh, background on where we are. So we're like eight eight months in, basically. Um, due date coming up in about six weeks. Yeah. And we are choosing not to find out the sex. Okay. So that puts an interesting spin on this idea of thinking about who I'm going to be as a father. Because I think if I knew the sex, then I would be thinking about specific events that I think are going to be happening in the future and yeah. how those events would play out. So thinking about, so if it's going to be a boy, then thinking about like playing catch in the backyard or, you know, um, hot wheels. Yeah. Or, hot wheels. Yeah. Whatever, yeah. whatever those more, you know, what season of power Rangers is going to come out next, basically <laughs> what version of power Rangers is going to come back out next. They're going to do know? cops and robbers pretty soon. Eventually. I'm, I'm super <laughs> into it, but yeah. Wild West themed Power Rangers somehow or something. Yeah. <laughs> it would be nice if they did that. They never touched that. Um, Opportunities. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, so then you know you think the the other spectrum. So that you can, if it's if it's going to be a girl, then you're thinking about like, how many boyfriends I'm going to have to beat up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I should buy. I'm going to have to buy a shotgun. You're going to have to buy a shotgun. Cleaning gun. kid. Hang yeah. it up on the wall. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> never actually use it, but just you know polish it. Just like. <laughs> um, but no, then you think about like you know the. the Tea parties or the dances, you sure. know, whatever, whatever these you know, girly themes are. But right. th- since we aren't finding out the sex, it, it makes it a little bit more interesting of trying to figure out what that means. And so you've talked to my wife, so you know that you know gender roles aren't you know hugely foundational in kind of our thinking. Like I I I don't. Um, necessarily think that if it's a boy he has to play sports or he has to play with Hot Wheels like he right. can play with Barbies if he wants I don't know right, right, right. or he could choose to I don't know play flute or you know whatever you think are the, the more feminine things that, you know typically or if it's a girl she could play you know she could play sports she could do you know whatever shoot guns I don't know whatever sure. um, so it, it just throws an interesting aspect so coming back to your question of you know do I do I think about um who I want to be as a father and kind of what what um, context that comes in. Um, yeah, I mean, I think about it a lot. You know, I think about, um, you know, yesterday we were we were sitting on the couch um, watching some stuff, uh, watching the Preds game on TV, and mm-hmm. I was thinking, you know, it'll be fun here in a couple months when the playoffs are happening, just having the the baby lay on my chest while I'm laying on the couch watching the Preds game. Okay. Or, you know, other things that... That may be coming up in the near future, and then thinking, you know, longer term, being able to take our kid to a game this or share those experiences. And I don't think that. Can I just try to catch up real yeah, quick? Yeah, yeah. So it sounded before that you were saying, like, I don't want to bias myself with what kind of father I want to be based on the sex of the kid. Because yeah. it's easy to fall into the practice of, like, oh, it's a boy. Now these are on the list, and these things are off the list. Yeah. You, and in the process of trying not to be biased, You've discovered this whole other tier of things that are like just as important to you, but aren't in any way related to like the 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 sex of the the new member of your family in a sense. Yeah, and you're also keeping both of these things open in the event that hey, if we want to play cash, we can play cash. If Definitely. we want to do sports, we want to do sports. If we want to play flute, how is flute playing female? Don't you know some of the greatest flute players are like <laughs> <laughs> Jethro Tull? <laughs> no, no, no. I don't know. Kenny I mean, G's like, know, this so is pretty manly. I, I was a band kid, okay, uh-huh. so, you know, it's just stereotypical that the flute and clarinet players are female. Oh, this is not the case. This is not the case. No, If I, you're I, a smart kid, you play clarinet because that's where all the girls are. But, right? Okay. Yeah. For, okay, maybe maybe it was just my high school, but for whatever reason, it was like basically woodwinds are female, brass are male, yes. percussion is male. Male. Like, <laughs> so if you're a female, you play woodwind, okay? That's, sorry, you know, not the. <laughs> we did have one black kid who played the bassoon, and it was this giant woodwind. And yeah, yeah. like touched the floor. But for some reason, the bassoon players at my school were Asian, but I don't know. Yeah. Takes all kinds. Yeah. Takes all kinds yeah. of bassoon. <laughs> I, I do worry. I, it's not so much a worry, but I wonder, like, Deer in the headlights moment. Mm-hmm. You get born and you're like, "Oh crap!" In in my heart of hearts, 
I, I am just totally not prepared for like any of this because I think when it's born, right, when a baby's born, I have two little sisters, right? Um, I was thinking, I hear I'm going to be a big brother. Let's go through the steps. Yeah. But it just turns out to just be a screaming blob of flesh for like the first three <laughs> weeks. And then when the second one, or when the second little sister came out, I'm just like, I know what I'm going to go through. It doesn't matter yeah. whether it's a boy or girl either way. Exact same thing. So there's a point before it even becomes, and this is only from the brotherly perspective, but before it even becomes like a person, it is a project. <laughs> this sounds bad. All right, all like right. it's not mine. <laughs> it is related to me, but like. Yeah. I'm developing a relationship with it, uh, with my sisters, and I found that because of that, all these things that I had planned down the road are like shelved to deal with like this relationship building exercise that I'm doing with this person that I've never met before. So yeah. like I've started doing things that I never ever thought about doing with like um, like uh, what what I had planned for a little sister. Like we would do tickle face. Okay. Um, things where I just like kiss around her face until she's like laughing, stop, same thing like you had said, and then just like rub the face, and then it's just like, oh, she thinks that's funny. Like I would never have planned that out, but that used now that's a thing that I do even when I see them regularly. Yeah, that's cool. It's a weird thing. So like, I guess uh, it's a roundabout question, but like, are you prepared, or how do you even prepare yourself for the random things that you'll do as you start to build a relationship with this new person that you think like? I like, mean, given was that, that a, was that a good move? Was that a bad move? Like, are you even like, is it? Oh, you so know see, what I mean? That, like that goes on like so many different levels to me. Like, on one sense, I'm sitting here sitting, thinking, like, so you said, how do you prepare for these random things? Well, those are random things are yeah. random because you don't do them until the moment, right? I mean, right. It's, more, it's almost like an improv thing. Like, you don't you don't think about doing them until you're in that moment. And so, so to me, yes. that, you know, that's like I can't really prepare myself for that. But then you you, you touched on that that second point of almost um, thinking about it after the fact and saying, like, was that appropriate in a way? Or what, you know, right. was that, um, I don't know, like, did I do the right thing in that moment? And mm. that's, that's like a whole different level of, you know, thinking back on the actions that you take and mm. how you de determine whether they were appropriate or not. And like, to some degree, when I think about, you know, my soon to be kid, I'm like, I don't, as, I mean, as long as it's not, like, super inappropriate, which I don't think I would do anything super appropriate. I no. hope I wouldn't, but, you know, as long as it's not super inappropriate, is there anything that you could do with your kid that would be the wrong thing to do in that moment? Like, as a parent, at, at least in, in, as a, of a newborn, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, clearly, you know, you get into later ages. and you We're know. kind of beyond objectivity here, but I figure, like, the, the, the issue that vexes a lot of parents as as far as I could tell from the siblings of what my parents have told me is that you're always thinking about what you could have done better mm. and that seems to be something that's really hard to let go particularly for I imagine like brand new parents just like today I did this or like today we had an argument with a kid and I told her you know I can't deal with you you got to go mm. to your room and you're thinking about that on a completely different level than the kids thinking about it like the kids angry but in five minutes she'll she or he will be like I'm totally fine with it where's my candy or like yeah. where's food but you're like I did that like four and a half years ago. Is this coming back to me? <laughs> Is this coming back to me again? I mean, I think... Like, what could I have done better? I mean, I think you could always do something better, right? Mm. I mean, there's always a way to improve on a situation, but, I mean, kind of like we talked about Sunday Assembly, trying my best. Like, yeah. you're doing... You're trying to do your best in every moment, and doing your best isn't always going to be, you know, the best that that there could be in the world, but at that given moment, it is your your best. It's still right? your, yeah, it's still and, you. And the other thing that I, you know, I, I thought about as you were asking that question is, you know, I think it's it's about building those relationships and having those experiences, even if those experiences aren't always the best that they could have been. Mm. Later on in life, hopefully you and your kid are going to be able together, like, look back on those experiences fondly and know that, you know, you were building this relationship, you were building this great thing, and I don't know, laugh at stupid things that happened, yeah. or, you know, maybe make amends on things that went wrong, or, you know, whatever the case may be, but I think just building those experiences, whatever they happen to be, is, is going to be a great experience. That's so cool. It sounds like this kid isn't just the, the, the test, I always say, it, the capstone of growing up, but is now just a new chapter in growing up. Oh, yeah, definitely. Nice. It's, it's a very life-changing event to, to have. I mean, I assume it's life-changing. It hasn't happened yet. I think it's going to be life-changing. How disappointing would be like, oh, dang it, that was easy. Wasn't that easy? <laughs> Wasn't that easy? 
Let's do this again. Uh, uh, lunch? I just, I just aced that. Lunch? What, what, what's the point <laughs> <in> that? Uh. <laughs> okay. It's like going back to college all over again. I know, right? Thank you so much for the chat. Yeah, I really appreciate thank you. it. Yeah.